So let me run this scenario through your head. My ex, he hasn't paid child support in five years, but for some reason his side piece, which he turned to his fiance after me, of course, is contacting me saying that I need to reimburse her because she was watching my brat during the weekend. The only time out of the entire week he has a little bit of responsibility and I'm supposed to pay? Well, you know what I told her. I'm 34 and I'm a single mother of one. My seven-year-old son, Kevin, is one of the few sources of joy I have in this world. After getting a divorce from his father five years ago, things were not so good for us. In the beginning, at least, I had made sure to sacrifice my chances at having a, well, a love life to ensure my son lacked nothing. And now, despite working two jobs, I'm happy with the way things turned out. Kevin visits his father and Nicole, his fiancée, every weekend. It's the perfect opportunity to see my mom and to make a little extra on the side as a hairstylist. Things were good in the beginning, but now Nicole is demanding I pay her for taking care of Kevin over the weekend. The amount she proposed is so ridiculous that I can't think about it without laughing hard. And I ignored her in the beginning, till she started putting my son in danger. Martin, my ex and Nicole's fiancé, is well aware of the situation, and I'm very upset that he has not done anything about it yet. When I was dating him, and very early in our marriage, he seemed like the most reasonable man to exist. Little did I know that he was a jerk who was spending most of the money meant for the house on gambling and alcohol, of course. You want to know his excuse? It was always the same. Uh, well, he had to work late, there were signs, but I ignored them till I could not ignore them a second longer. At that time, I was a mere secretary and was not making enough to take care of the house. Then I found out I was pregnant and knew it was a matter of time before I'd be staying home most of the time. When I confronted Martin and asked him about the money that was meant for the house, he told me that he was making certain investments. Some months after that, he got fired because of his habits. I think that's when I realized that everything he told me was a big old fat lie. You don't fire an employee who works extra hours almost every day, do you? And when he could not get a reasonable explanation for the sudden disappearance of the investment he had made, I knew that he squandered the money. After a few more months of suffering, and I knew I would not be able to live this way. I had endured however long I could, but looking for freelance jobs to ensure my family survived. To my surprise, when my son was two years of age, Martin filed for a divorce. See, I don't even bother pushing for our marriage. Sometimes you just know something is over and don't bother fighting for it. I moved out of our small apartment and stayed with my mom and got custody of my child later on. Martin was instructed by the court to pay child support, and that was that. We went our separate ways, and you would think that was it, that I would stop keeping contact with my ex-husband, but he failed to do his part by refusing to send money for child support. At that point in my life, I was happy that I had my mom. She would go to work during the day, and I quit my job to get a nighttime hustle that paid fairly well. My mom would take care of Kevin at night, and I'd do the same during the day. Things were smooth at that time, and I'd even forgotten that I was meant to pressure Martin to send me money for Kevin's upkeep. But when my mother, she fell ill, blood cancer it was, I just knew I would not be able to cope with talking about taking care of two people and the expenses. I barely had time to work, even hiring a nurse was out of the question. And when I had contacted Martin, he just made these promises that he could not keep, which was something I had expected deep down. After visiting him, I discovered that he was at a horrible point in his life, where he could barely afford to take care of himself. So reporting him to the authorities would barely do me any good. I did the next best thing, taking a bank loan, and it's been five years and I'm close to completing the payment of the loan I took out. I'd use money to learn uh, the soft skill that is paying my mom's medical bills, the rent and other bills, and making sure that my son lacked absolutely nothing, along with starting a hairdressing business. It was a lot of adjusting, but I eventually managed to make things work. When Martin had gotten back on his feet three years ago, we had agreed that he would watch Kevin over the weekends, and I would like to think that it was because he wanted to spend time with his son. 
and Kevin acted like, well, well, Kevin liked being with him. I think he's aware that Martin is his father, but I don't know that for sure. When I tried getting my son a babysitter at some point so I'd stop bothering Martin, he became so different. Kevin was a lively child, and while my energy was not always enough to match his, I was used to it. I knew that he wanted to be with his father when his mood changed completely when I mentioned visiting Martin. And that was that. Martin would take care of Kevin over the weekend, and I would use the time to make some money, visit my mom, and relax before getting uh, Kevin again. Nicole comes into the story, right, two years after the agreement with Martin. I wasn't surprised that he was able to attract another woman so soon. That was how he had managed to get me. I met Nicole a few months ago, and when I went to drop off Kevin, she started living with Martin at the time and was upset when she saw Kevin. She did manage to pretend to tolerate him, and I knew that as long as Martin was there, my son was safe. I didn't particularly like Nicole. I was able to tell that a lot of her was fake, both physically and personally wise, but she was the last thing on my mind. All that mattered to me were the safety and welfare of my son. Nicole was able to tell this on time, and barely one month into living with Martin and taking care of Kevin alongside him, she began calling to ask for money to take care of Kevin. I won't lie, I thought that she was kidding about the entire thing, because it made no sense. My child was staying with his father, and you happened to live with him. Why on earth would I pay you anything? She uh, had told me that she would stop paying any attention to Kevin when he was around, and since I had refused to compensate her. After ignoring Nicole the first time, I went to Martin to get, well, well, Kevin one Sunday evening, and found him lying so close to the edge of the bed. And that's not even the alarming part, because tell me why Nicole had decided it was wise to leave a bucket of water and bleach near a child who had the tendency to roll over when he was asleep. I obviously confronted her as soon as I woke Kevin up, and she explained that she had planned to use it to scrub the bathroom, and just forgot all about it. The paranoia in me refused to believe that to this day, and I had reported her to Martin, who told me to let it go. It's an honest mistake. Well, Nicole didn't stop there. The first time I knew for sure that she was out to hurt my son on purpose was when she had him touch a hot tray, forgetting that she had it preheated, of course. I couldn't care less about the story then, because I flared up when my son had told me it hurt to touch his little hands. It took about five days to fully heal, and once again, Martin said it was a mistake on Nicole's part. I tried begging him to stay home with that woman, but he was really just hustling and trying to make things good for himself and his fiance. Even if I didn't like her or have feelings for him anymore, they were both people. What I did know was that Nicole wasn't stupid. Children get unnecessary injuries and boo-boos, but at least as an adult, you should try to prevent all of that from happening. She made sure my son got injured, and after the least of five more instances, I knew she was trying to provoke me. The one time that I flared up was about two months ago. Martin and Nicole had taken my son out to a park, and he had gone into a swimming pool unsupervised. I never would have known this if Kevin had not mentioned hating the water while we were going, when I asked him to explain, he told me that Nicole had told him to jump into the pool with her, and that he could not remember much afterwards. Martin had then completed the story, saying that Nicole had not known that Kevin couldn't swim, and had thought that he was messing with her till he did not resurface. He also said that he had talked some sense into his fiance, but I was livid. Now, how hard would it have been to just call me to ask, or even ensure what my son would use safety equipment if he had to get into the pool? That one stupid mistake could have cost him his life, and all she could do was play stupid. She had not even apologized for letting this happen. I had yelled in her face, and if Martin wasn't there, I'd had gotten violent. You know, the next thing she did, she sent me a text message telling me to pay her if I wanted Kevin to be completely supervised. I should report her, but after mulling it over, I don't have substantial evidence, just my suspicion. I've also thought of watching Kevin myself, but then my mom's bills will suffer, and this I knew after doing so for two weeks after the incident. 
I almost fell sick myself because I was so exhausted after carrying my son with me to see my mom two Sundays in a row and supervising his every move for two Saturdays. I even tried with a babysitter again, but Kevin really doesn't want one. This time he got upset, and by the time I got back to pay her, she had the most unpleasant look on her face and I knew I wasn't going to see her again. I've spoken to Martin, who has promised to talk to Nicole on my behalf. He also promised Kevin's safety, and I'll have to bank all that till I find a solution. But still, there's this uneasy feeling in my heart. But I don't know how to get out of this situation while also taking care of my mom. Do you guys have any suggestions or ideas about what I can do? What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. Today's comment. Well... A lot of people agreed with it, and a lot of people did not. Here it is, the first comment from the main post before we hop into update one. And guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe for daily videos. Here it is, comment one. This is funny. You know someone is out to hurt your son, and you still leave him with her? Plus, this is someone I'm sure you can smack some sense into. If she tries any funny business, I promise that your ex won't do anything to change the situation. So use your head and keep your son away from her. Also, who in their right mind doesn't make a report once their ex doesn't pay child support? You're working yourself to the bones because of it and still complaining? You know what? You're creating problems for yourself, so you might as well solve them alone as well. Update number one. Hey guys, it's been three weeks and I've had the last straw. I've had it with Nicole, and this time I'm going to deal with her like I should have months ago. My son would have been declared missing if not for a phone call made to the police. I'm just so glad that there was no one who could cause harm around my son at the time that he was missing, or I might have done something that I would regret. Her. <laughs> yeah, I'd gone to visit my mom like I usually did on Saturdays. Martin had told me that he would be absent and that Nicole and would watch Kevin. I was skeptical at first, but she had calmed uh, down ever since Martin said that he would speak to her. See, my mother is not doing any better, by the way. And after this month, I'll be unable to pay her chemotherapy because, well, I've slacked off the past few weeks. That's unless I take out the savings I have for the loan, which isn't something I'm really keeping on doing, if I'm being honest. Well, while all of these thoughts were running through my head at the time, that is, I had received a call from Nicole. She was sobbing over the phone, and she told me that Kevin was missing. I don't remember ever being close to having a stroke or something similar, but I could not move my body for a few seconds as I processed the statement. Then came the fight or flight, and I got very close to receiving a speeding ticket as I drove over to Martin's. Nicole had called him too, and we had asked the neighbor and eventually had to call the police. That's when we discovered that he was at a nearby supermarket. Martin had convinced the people and, well, told the police that everything was fine, whereas I had almost made a scene because of it. Now, Nicole had said that my son had just stepped out of the supermarket on his own while she was doing her shopping, and when she turned around to look for him, he was nowhere to be found. She had looked around and gone back home to a place to call to me, I'm not sure of what else to do, Kevin, on the other hand, had told me that he had indeed left Nicole to get some potato chips, some crispies, well, for her, and could not find her after getting them. I'm not gonna lie, both stories sounded ridiculous, but I believe my boy. If Nicole was capable of thinking that he could just swim because he was old enough to know how to, she could have sent my son to get something else from the supermarket. Nicole got upset and called my son a liar, nearly hitting him in the process and Martin had to hold me to stop her from hitting her. Another thing that upset me was Martin's behavior. He just seemed tired and did not even ask Nicole in questions of any sort. Nicole then mentioned watching my son better if only she was being paid money. In fact, she said, and I quote, you did not expect me to go out and start looking for your son like a lunatic, did you? It's not my fault that he refused to stay by my side, and maybe, if you had paid me to take care of him, I would have to put in all the effort to keep him safe. But you're not, and neither is that kid my son, so I'm not obligated to do anything like that. 
It was absolutely maddening at the time, and I was shocked that Martin did not get upset. When I asked why, he started with the whole, it was probably a mistake on my son's part. My son, not our son. When he then said that he had watched Kevin for years without compensation and that I should consider paying Nicole some money so she would take care of my son properly, I reminded him that he had not paid a lick of child support for five years. He repeated his statement about taking care of Kevin during the weekend without asking me for a thing. I understood. Somehow, that man believed that child support was the same thing as feeding and talking and just taking care of Kevin for less than two days a week. I was speechless. I could only storm out of the house with my son. The first important thing that I did when I got home was have Kevin memorize my number. If he had known it, we would oh, have prevented today's disaster. Then after doing some thinking, I realized that I was not going to take it easy on either Nicole nor Martin. I've contacted my lawyer and he'll be coming tomorrow so we can discuss everything that happened and come up with ideas on how to deal with those two. I'm done playing nice. Update number two. Hey guys, it's been six weeks and here's the update you were waiting for. Mr. Keith, my lawyer, was quite upset with me when I told him everything. I'd been careless and extremely empathetic, which was why I was in the situation I currently was in. According to him, well, he's gotten my bank statements from the past few years, which showed that I had indeed taken out a loan, and that Martin had not once sent anything to my account. Also, he mentioned getting evidence that both Nicole and Martin, particularly the former, were neglecting my son on purpose. I never knew that it was punishable offense in court, and now I have a plan to get Nicole in action both on video and audio. Mr. Keith assured me that getting substantial evidence would ensure that I would win the case I'd filed against Nicole. You know, the funny part about all of this is that my plan also ended up working, but a situation I wasn't going to let go, um, past me, presented itself. I also made sure to tell Nicole to stop being careless after uh, taking my son to her again. This was the advice given to me by Mr. Keith. I was expressed some concern about my son's safety when he mentioned taking Kevin over to the house again. He told me that telling Nicole um, that would either trigger her into doing the exact same thing that she had been doing or make her see the light. And he was certain of the first, though, and assured me that as long as she did not want to go to prison, would not let anything seriously bad happen to the child. I wasn't convinced on the other hand, but decided, heck it, I'll just go ahead with the plan. So, I visited my mother afterward, like I always did. This time, I told her everything. I had a fear of reporting the situation to her when she asked why I was so down and about, but she saw right through my act all the time. Yeah, she got very upset and asked me to leave and get Kevin immediately, and I just told her everything would be fine. She kept pestering me and made me video call Nicole repeatedly till she took the call. After taking it, she had asked why I had called and I told her my mom wanted to speak to Kevin. She had muttered something under her breath in annoyance and when I asked her where my son was, she just told me that he was somewhere around the home, alone. My mom had gotten mad at her at this point, asking how Nicole could be so heartless enough to have abandoned him at the supermarket. As Nicole began to tell my mother, that she was free to do what she wanted to do, I began to take the video recording I needed. My mom asked about the pool scenario as well, and Nicole flared up and began to hurl insults at her. I began to defend my mom, telling Nicole that I would make sure she paid for what she was doing to my son. What I'm about to say still scares me whenever I think about it. After telling Nicole that she would not go free, she smiled and told me that Kevin would be hurt again if I said another word. I told her not to do a thing, and she told me to get my son before something bad truly happened to him again. Perhaps it was the tone of her voice, um, or maybe the look in her eyes, but for the second time I fled from the hospital. This time I got a speeding ticket, but that didn't matter to me. Nicole had hurt not, ah, uh, well, my sleeping child? Thankfully, we had gotten into an argument, and we both hit each other before hurling insults at one another. I didn't know the woman saw me as someone who wanted to ruin her relationship with Martin. Another opportunity presented itself, and although it was a lot harder, I got a voice recording of her admitting to wanting to hurt little old Kevin, because she wanted both of us out of Martin's life. 
She had exposed him to danger on more than one occasion that I knew of, and when I tried getting the information out of her, she just became suspicious. So I picked up my son and took him home with me. Mr. Keith came around yesterday and was pleased with what I had shown him. He told me that he needed some time to prepare the lawsuit and present it before the court or whatnot, and I told him to contact me when I was needed. I've spoken to Kevin as well, and I've gotten to know that my son is not so keen on staying over at Martin's anymore. He told me that he did not like Nicole so much and that Martin himself barely spent time with him. It's sad, but a good thing now that my son's feeling towards them are clear to me. Nothing is stopping me from ensuring that Nicole faces the, the law. Update number three. Hey guys, it's been a while, what, I don't know, five weeks since the last update and here's what's going on. Mr. Keith called me to inform that the case against Martin had been filed and uh, that of Nicole was still in the process. I'd been down after he had told me, and it was partly because Martin was not in a good position to pay child support for a year. Not to mention that for five years he hasn't paid it. It would be hard on him, and in my moments of weakness, I'd gone to visit them. I left my son with a neighbor and went over on a Friday evening. It was a good thing I had done that, because now I have no problems with Martin paying the money he owed. So I went to visit, and was not even let in the house by Nicole, she had made me wait outside for over half an hour, and I was let in because Martin had come home. He had asked me what I was doing here, and I was sheepish and a scatterbrained at the point, and in fact, I had already started to regret going over there. I then made up a half lie, telling him I'd gone to report Nicole to him. I mentioned everything she had told me, and you know what that man said? He told me that Kevin... In his words, my son was still alive and healthy, and that I should stop making such a big deal out of nothing. Well, I got very upset after what he said, and told him that I was not going to let things slide. That earned me a cuss word and an instruction to leave the house. When I had not budged and tried getting the cold to admit to everything, I was pushed away and almost hit across the face by my ex-husband. Even when we were married, Martin had never raised a hand to me. I was stunned and walked out of the house as quickly as I could, after crying my pain away. I just straight up, well, reminded myself that Mr. Keith was working on punishing those two, and drove away. I made sure to call him to check up on their progress and informed him that he should do to them whatever he saw fit. You know, my uh, neighbor told me something important as well. I'd taken my son to see my mom and we lodged a guest house for some time, going back on Sunday evening because Kevin had school. To my surprise, Martin had come to visit, something he had not done. In fact, my ex had never visited myself and my son not once. Goes to show how little he cared for us. He had caused a ruckus and kept getting, uh, well, hit my door over and over and my neighbor told uh, me that he had mentioned something about a court date and making sure I regretted it. Well, obviously, I put two and two together and realized that he had been summoned by court regarding the money for the child support. I'd been frightened to the point where I tried getting a restraining order. Mr. Keith personally could not handle that, but he knew someone who could, and it was for a fee. I didn't mind, and in a few days after a short hearing, it was settled. Mr. Keith also visited afterward. A few days before I had gone to court, he had informed me that he had spoken to Martin's lawyer and they had both agreed that they weren't interested in a formal trial. The court was going to decide the case and most likely settle for a summary judgment, since it wasn't exactly a criminal case. Plus, both Nicole and Martin did not want to escalate the situation a second further. I wondered why that was, but maybe their lawyer had advised them on it. I'll shorten this. In the end, Nicole was charged with child endangerment, while Martin had to pay me a, a substantial sum of child support money with a very specified time. He was charged with neglect as well. It's been a few weeks since the judgment was passed, and I hope they end up of doing as the law instructed. I won't ignore it like I did with Martin this time. Final updates. Update number four. Hey guys. Oh, um, I know that it's been five months since my last update, but I'm here to wrap things up. So, I relocated and I found somewhere cheaper. You know, closer to the hospital my mom was at. 
Also, she's looking better, though the chances of her survival are very slim. I'll keep encouraging her to fight till she can't anymore, though. And now that I'm closer to her, I visit her every day, sometimes with little Kevin. He was upset that we had to move in the beginning, but I can see that he's adapting to our new place in Ohio. He's made a new friend, which had led me to meeting the man that I've been dating for a month. His name is David, and he's a widower with a son a year older than Kevin. They got along very well. Thank goodness, but taking care of two energetic young boys is really difficult. <laughs> Ugh. As for work, I just have one job now. The soft skill. I sold my hairdressing business to a lady who I knew was good at needing the shop, and she's paying in installments, but I don't mind at all, since I'm getting enough from my ex as, well, his fiancé as well. For the first time in a while, I can rest without thinking of bills, or my son's safety, or my mom. And now there's someone in my life, and it makes things even better. I've told him just a little bit about what happened, and he got so concerned that he told me to put his number on speed dial. In case of an emergency, it was sweet of him, but something tells me that Nicole and Martin won't cross their boundaries this time. Mr. Keith also came for a little visit, and while I hope I won't be needing his services for anything serious, I'll miss being able to just talk to him about everything. Despite being uh, rigid in his belief as a lawyer, he was also a kind friend, which is something everyone needs once in a while. We'll still be in contact, that I'm sure of. For now on, my main priorities are my baby boy, my mom, and nurturing the possibility of a new family. And lastly, I just want to thank you for sticking around.